The expedition to the Batar Mountains in Western Mongolia is to study the archaeology, the botany and the zoology of the area, whilst at the same time giving some aid to the local people, particularly medical aid, and also glasses for the older people who need them. Dentistry is one of the the greatest needs of the people in this area because they will eat sweets and drink sugary drinks and so on. Well, the Sega antelope is endangered and the zoologists are particularly keen to find out how many there are in this area and in what state they are. First of all, his horses have been reintroduced and we've been doing a short study there checking on the welfare of these horses. So it's a mixture really of conservation and wildlife studies in an area where not that many people go. advantages is that everybody knows what's going on who's got a radio and you know what each of the groups are, are doing and indeed if one group can communicate with another group but not with another group then you can relay messages and things like that so so there are lots of advantages uh, there are very few tarred roads as you would have gathered uh, looking out of the plane windows today uh, basically the within the cities and connecting the major cities is the limit of the tarred roads and everything else in between is, is dirt um, people aren't um, that big on queuing, it's not considered the thing to do, a jostling is the norm uh, and that's not considered rude and we shouldn't consider it so either. Uh, dress modestly, so gents, uh, no mankinis please. <laughs> Uh, so today we watched archery and wrestling. Tomorrow we're going to be watching uh, horse racing. Mugbaya has discussed uh, exactly what he wants to do. Uh, there are a series of cave paintings. Um, there are hundreds of them. And he doesn't want every single one photographed and drawn. He's particularly interested in those showing camels and people. And uh, Paul is going to lead a group, I've called it Group X-Ray, um, to go in and do the actual uh, study of these drawings and make uh, copies of as many as we can by hand as drawings and also to take photographs. <laughs> After the others have just seen what there is to see quickly, the archaeological group and the botany group will come back out and then we shall go to our site, which is a little bit further on. Yeah, 
this, uh, name of this cave is North Blue Cave. It was found in 1952 by a shepherd that accidentally found your blood drawings on the walls. In 1953, a uh, great archaeologist Raman uh, you came here and you know, studied this cave. And he found out that the blood painting was from the Neolithic period. Goats. I think the easiest thing is horns, head, neck, body, and then two legs. And I can't quite see number two, I think. Sort of does that. Yep. And they're from the Turkish period. So six to eight hundred AD, apparently. speculating that because this whole grave is so big yeah, it might have uh, actually been, been someone yes lady, yeah. yes someone who was a noble noble woman uh, you know, someone of high yeah. standard yeah. now uh, deer stones usually represent a human's figure the three lines represent a person's face because at that time they would you know, put lines on the face with yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. Now, inside these finds, they would place uh, you know, animal, or they were they found animal bones and mm -hmm. animal remains inside mm -hmm. of that. So, nomads at that time believed that by burning the animals, the meat inside the fire, when the smoke rises, uh, they believed the yes. Mm. yes. Oh, okay, interesting.
I am planning to put in some uh, Sherman traps along to the, this valley. Uh, then we will have a spot lighting around here. I am expecting in uh, some uh, rodents. Okay. It's especially in a uh, gerbil and gerbil. It's a. Uh, <coughs> You need to put in a bait to the in a side and corner. Yeah. And animal, uh, its smell is very uh, strong. And if animal would come here and try to would eat to the go to the uh, that side, put in there, and door will be uh, closed. Okay. And can't. Come on, come on. Can, yeah, cannot. It does not kill the animal. It just keeps. The it's a. Uh, it's a safety for the animal. What's the bait? It's a uh, rice. Rice. Yeah. Tonight uh, we're gonna set in 15. Okay. A lot. Traps. Yeah. That would be enough. The jibbo that uh, we have seen in last night. Oh, really? Can you go there and light? Yeah. <coughs> oh wow! Yeah. Beautiful animal. Okay, uh, we have just set in uh, our mist net and uh, I'm uh, expecting uh, two to three species of the bats. As you can see, there's quite a lot of mosquitoes around here. So we're, going, we're hoping to get loads of bats in this. Uh, so the mist net, some of the, some of the bats, local bats, can pick up that there is um, a net there by echolocation, but some of them cannot, so we're hoping to catch them. If they hit the net, which we... We will check it every 15 minutes. We're going to tilt it down. We're going to pull them out of the net with our gloves on because obviously they can bite. And not that they're going to really stop biting us if we have gloves on, but we think that they're going to, that's going to protect us. Then we're going to put them into here. And then the scientists a little bit later will come and check them out and tell us what they are. And hopefully we'll have caught a number of different species.
camera trap which, which is dedicated for the wildlife and uh, research of your camp um, due south from where you're sat now. Over. Roger, what time do you, do you expect to be here? Over. How long it takes to get down safely? Over. I'm going through this way now. That's what I thought we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, just collected in the first camera trap and we're moving on to the second one now. Over. Watch out. neck and having to um, curtail the expedition or anything like that so we will not do any climbing down these squeeze slopes in future People. 41. 41. Yes, 41 people, uh, children and grown-ups. Yes. And for three children, she applied uh, medicine onto the you. Cavity. Yeah, cavity. Mm -hmm. To stop the cavity from spreading. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, uh, more than five teeth were, had problems. And she took three teeth from about one, uh, one person. About three teeth from one person. Discontinuations between the ground and space to identify where the chambers are and we found or I found two circular sections possibly indicating a female burial um, and also a square section which indicated possibly an entrance chamber and after that was flagged out because uh, we marked them out flagged out I asked for the direction of the chamber and it was pointing due east uh, that uh, and that came in. The the interesting point from thing from my point of view was that as I was dowsing it out, it wasn't making any sense to me at all. However, once the flagging had been completed and you stood at the top of the tomb, uh, it all made sense. We, at that stage, we saw Lamagaya and um, Cinerea sculpture over the skyline, um, over the ridges. Um, after that, we continued along the ridge and found. Um, Wheatier, Rock Dove, Rock Sparrow, Goodenstart, Red Start, and Saw Mongolian Finch.
Day of the expedition, and uh, we've had a pretty busy 10 days. 
we started in Lombardo, um where we saw the sights and went to a fascinating concert. And uh, now then we moved to Hoft, uh, where we saw Nardum, which was an interesting spectacle, as it always is, with some fantastic riding, archery, and uh, the wrestling. We then headed out into the country, um, and um, first thing we did was to go into some caves to see some extraordinary cave paintings dating, dating back thousands of years, which we photographed and charted uh, for the local study. Um, from there, we went out into the Batar Mountains, where we met up with our horses. And since we've been there, we've been carrying out archaeology, botany, and zoological tasks. Uh, all have been pretty successful. Uh, one group of um, uh, botanists actually went by foot and got right up to the snow line and found some fascinating plants. Uh, the uh, zoology clambered up some pretty terrifying slopes and positioned the camera traps, uh, which produced some interesting sights. Um, mostly a rather a curious looking shepherds peering down the camera trap uh, lens and a few goats but there was one snowcock and um, are we hoping to get more with that later on. Uh, the um, other sightings included everything from possibly a wolf and possibly a palace cat which is quite a rare animal seen at night and uh, then all the smaller ones of course the, um, the gerbils, the jerbab and, and so on. Um, the archaeologists have had an absolute field day. This place is littered with ancient tombs dating back to the uh, Iron and Bronze Age. Dr. Munkbeyer from the uh, Hoft University is uh, over the moon at some of the discoveries which are new to him. Um, you'd think that they knew all the uh, sites here but there are many that haven't yet been discovered and certainly most of them have not been excavated which is probably just as well so it's a future job uh, for archaeologists in the years to come. Uh, we're continuing to do that here and um, we've now reached a small town called Bayanzug uh, which is real, really a, what they call a Somme, it's not really a town um, where actually there's a, a little local Nardum going on tonight so there'll probably be music most of the night and um, of course here we're carrying out a clinic we've already done one very successful dental and medical clinic um, up in the mountains where people poured in from all over the place to have their teeth pulled out um, and also to get free glasses that's one of the um, things that we do we bring out these reading glasses from uh, Britain and uh, distribute those they were certainly very popular and we'll be doing more of that in the future here. So the expedition's going pretty well. It's on plan. Uh, we've had one or two tumbles from the horses. Um, the lady um, botanist from Mongolia got tossed in the air, but luckily not badly hurt. And one or two others have, have had tumbles as well. The horses are, are pretty wild and quite frisky, um, but nevertheless, uh, most of them are behaving reasonably well. One just has to take great care with them. And so the trip now is to continue here and then go on to look for Sega's antelope further over in the east, which we shall do in a few days' time. So over the last week we've surveyed several sites around the Hoft region of the Altai Mountains in Western Mongolia. Uh, we've compiled a list of all the different species we've seen and documented them by taking photographs. We've surveyed on about 2,005 meters above sea level at this time. We surveyed about 40 species of plants and we took note of it and photograph of it. And 40 of the, those species are endemic to Altai Mountains in Mongolia. Uh -huh. We found two species of plants and about 3,000 meters above sea level. 
Taraksakum. And those uh, n names of those plants are Selen and Taraksakum. And she, I believe that these two species are new foundings that we find on this span of time. Um, my name is Fran McNichol. Usually I'm a colorectal surgeon in Liverpool. I'm Yasmin Johari. I'm a specialist registrar in general surgery. And we're here um, on expedition in outer Mongolia. We have been looking after the expedition members and we've also done a couple of community aid clinics. In terms of community aid clinics, we've generally seen anywhere between 13 to 15 patients a clinic with um, a wide range of presentations, quite few people, very young people with high blood pressure. And we've also had a, a few patients with um, poorly managed infections that we've had to treat or send to the local hospital. Um, generally, I think it's been a really positive experience. It's been a great privilege to be here. Um, to meet the people of the country in a different way and to learn more about their healthcare system. Um, they seem to have some access to doctors, but not regular, and um, obviously you have to pay for quite a lot of stuff. So it's been great to be able to offer them help and advice yeah. in return for a wonderful visit. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> Um, it was trying to wear a whole ball. Who did it? Walk on. Okay. Alright. Nice. 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 area first, so it'll be a bit cold. If you think you can So he'll be able to feel pressure, but hopefully not too big, but we'll see. So Afterwards we don't stitch it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. what we want to do is let any of the infection that's still in there out. Please no scars. Please no scars. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. And Mm. Okay, I'm just going to ah. squeeze around it now. Too close. Do you right, Matt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't fainted yet. I just don't hear exactly. <laughs> yeah. just hear this bang on the cameraman. Well, I'm going to be mostly out now, to be honest. Okay, we'll tell him that the wound is closed. Well, not closed, but it's 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 it looks like it's in the process of healing. In in about five to seven days. That fluid is going to come out, okay? If, as long as whatever is in there is coming out, there's nothing really to worry, worry about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she says. Yeah, she says. <laughs> <laughs> a small village called Bayanzush and uh, we've come over the mountains to here looking for burial sites and deer stones and we've come across this quite remarkable one and I'm going to ask Dr. Uh, Munkbaya, the archaeologist from Hoft to tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> We are in Hog Provinces, Mussumi Bainzuch district, <coughs> and here where all archaeologists dream to find uh, deer stones. So, in the Sulu, Mongol Sing, Hamging at the Tansigur Silte, this one's the most marvelous deer stone that was found here in Mongolia. За бүгэн ч олон гүшээ гэдэг нь бол дээрээ ингээд хүний одоо нүүрийг дүссэн байна. Usually deer stones uh, you know, at top have the facial features of uh, you know, a person's face facial features. За энэ дунд хэсэгтэй бол ингээд 
Чингирлю дуулж байгаа юм шиг одоо энэ хошиг та бүгд үссэн байдаг. Center area there's a deer that uh, you that looks like it's going to the sky. The bottom area of the deer stone that represents the belt. За энэ бол нэгэн одоо язгуурын гаралта нийгмийн дээд төвшний хүн байсан учраас бүсийг нь бол ингэж хэтэ ингэж үссэн байна. If you look at the belt, you can see that this person was uh, from nobility, seeing as the, seeing all the patterns on the belt. So this is a memorial to a great chief, uh, whose uh, burial mound is very close that we'll be looking at in a moment. And in fact, it dated from about 1100 to 700 BC. It's Bronze Age. Um, Bunkmeyer says this is one of the finest, if not the finest, in the whole, in the whole country. And uh, you can see with care uh, the designs that have been carved onto this granite uh, deer stone. They show leopards, mountain goats, and then uh, perhaps some deer further down. And then at the base, you've got a belt with uh, a couple of knives. So it's a quite remarkable uh, piece of archaeology. Behind me we have a burial tomb dating Bronze Age, 700 to 1500 BC. And we think it belongs to a significant person. We think, uh, given the shape of the tomb, it could be a female person, because we've discovered over quite a number of site, um, graves or tombs that we've discovered over the mountains, so some 30 to 40 kilometers of hard riding over these mountains and we found that rectangular graves uh, signify a male person and circular ones are female. This is a, the biggest of the finds we've had in what we have as what seemingly is the valley of tombs of many of these graves. This is one of the largest and hence warrants a study with the deer stone nearby. Um, we will be investigating uh, various measurements and we're using dowsing techniques as well to uh, locate the chambers within the burial um, mound itself. Another thing we have to do here is to map out the site to establish the exact position, the size of the various constructions um, and the bearings between various constructions. We basically stand in the middle of that mound, take some measurements from the centre um, such as the radius to the outer part of that mound, uh, the inner mound, and uh, then we have the there's outer circles which are peripheral to the mound. We take whatever message, whatever radius, diameter, etc., to establish its, its true plan. Right now we're sketching one part of the you know, deer stone. On this side you can see uh, you know, different styles of deers. There's uh, four deers on this side. And all of them have the similar uh, all of them have a similar design right here you can see the mouth near the eyes then going this direction there's the antlers and the body of it by doing this we're able to show the beautiful designs of deer stone
So this morning we got up very, very early at about 6 a.m. here in Western Mongolia in a desert area to see if we could find the uh, famous Saiga antelope. And uh, we had three search parties in Jeeps scanning quite a wide area. And um, although they're quite a long way away, several of the teams managed to sight this elusive animal. They did not start telling their family and friends what they've been doing and what a terrible time they'd had or anything that they actually asked them questions about what had been happening whilst they were away and uh, it sounded like good advice i got home and said to judith how are those new trees we planted getting on and she said what went wrong <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, but it is a general idea that in the old days before we had digital pictures of course you waited for the time for your pictures to be developed and then you had a sort of family evening with a lot of wine and showed the pictures around but maybe something like that uh, but 
maybe you've got lot, lots of things to do in life, you won't have Expedition Blues. We shall have a um, an address to the haggis um, by Mr. Peter Mans there, and I shall follow it up with a Yorkshire version. And this is all in extremely good humour, and it's um, Robert Burns, in fact, which the whole night is, is a Scottish poet, as most of you will already know, um, apart from the Mongolians. So um, they celebrate it every January, but John always celebrates it every expedition. We have to stab it with a jerk before we can chuck in and punch about with poetry whilst raising the glass to sup. But pardon me French, we're all bloody hungry. So hey up everyone, grubs up. Hey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the haggis. The haggis. The haggis. The haggis. The haggis. The haggis. Thank you, Judith, for allowing me to toast the ladies tonight. It's important to recognise the achievements of lasses and elevated position many have ascended to. Fran and Yasmin, of course, are fine examples of this. The lasses greatly enhanced and enriched the life of Robert, Robert Burns. And indeed, where would us lads be without our lasses? So join me now to our bonnie lasses. <laughs> far, far away. The intrepid crew of the SES, SES Explorer set forth in a fleet of Soviet bonnie led by JBS, as to Obi-Wan Kenobi, on a mission to educate and explore the galaxy. In a constant battle with the dark side, featuring... Mark Personal tribute to the Bard. Um, by reciting a poem by William McConnell, uh, who is surely Scotland's second most favourite literary son, and in fact the author of the legendary Bridge o'er the Silvery Tay. <laughs> and it's called The Coup, and it goes like this. On yonder hull there stood a coup. It's no there new. It must have shafted. <laughs> build my love a bower by yon clear and crystal fountain. I need so Ten years later, and uh, to see that man uh, riding a horse for eight hours at 82 years old over the mountains is absolutely inspiring. I can't tell you. Uh,